Good evening, folks. Good lord. Let's have a look. Okay, so, hello. I'd love to hear from you if you are able to hear me. And uh, if there's video up and all that kind of stuff, there should be. Um, yeah, we're in a different setup there, so... So audio and video is working, yeah? Is it a bit loud? Uh, because the dials... I'm... Am I very bright? Mm, yeah, I suppose I'm a little bright in the settings. Let's, uh, let's, let's fuck around with that then. Let's mess with these properties. Oh, fucking hell. Am I going to be able to change this without everything exploding? Let's turn off the auto things. Because, oh my god, that was even worse. Exposure. Let's bring me down a bit. How's that? It's a little more... It's a little more reasonable. I think we'll go with that. Yes, but we do have a white background. It is a different setup. So I hope that's all right. Um, yeah, sounds okay. Excellent. That's what I need to know. Okay, yes. First off, we're in a different place. We're in a different place because I've uh, got some my in-laws coming over, which is awesome. But I didn't want them to have to listen to me yell for two hours. And I really didn't want to reschedule because I'm loving the fact we're almost back into these kind of 9 to 11 slots every Wednesday. And I want to keep that rhythm up. So I've run down to where my friends work and they've graciously let me steal their office. And have provided me with soda and screens and everything. So we have something. I had this lovely setup where I've got the kind of big-ass screens and their lovely keyboards and shit like that. And you know how bad my typing normally is. It was fucking abysmal um, when I was trying to do it <laughs> through uh, through their lovely keyboards. So sensitive. And I just hammer keys like an idiot. So that was not working. So I'm going to have this um, huge laptop in front of me, which was made mostly out of a, a uh, hovercraft. And so you probably hear that in the background. So I'm apologizing about that. Um... <laughs> 9 to 11. Oh, I'm not going to repeat that, Ponder Pimp, but it's good, <laughs> good to have you here. Right, let's see, actually, see who's lurking. I'm all thrown out of whack at the moment because of the changes. I can't com manage the changes. Okay, so good evening to Darius and Divide by Zero and L for T and Ponder Pimp and Shimera. Hello, sir. And uh, Talal and uh, VNK and Virgo Pros. Hello, hello. Let's, uh, let's get settled in. So. Hopefully, I'm got, again, with the weird fucking setup, I'm not sure what you can see right now. I can just peek down here, though. But you should be able to see code, which is good. Uh, one of the first things we're going to do is we have our scene from last time. These are our spheres that we're drawing with instancing, and this is the depth buffer. Now, one of the things we couldn't do before was have no fragment shader, because if we remove this, um, we turn off, in Keppel, we turn off the entire rasterizer. And that kind of sucks, actually, because one of the useful things about having the rasterizer on... Fuck, no, okay. Jump the gun there, boy. Right, old frag stage, and it was a VEC 3. Come on. <laughs> You're spoiling my big reveal with your history. It's almost like I was preparing for the stream. Right, so... When we have this stage here, we have the rasterizer on, which means it's riding to the depth buffer. But we could have the rasterizer enabled, and no fragment stage. But there wasn't a way to express that in Keppel before. So, over the weekend, I hacked that in. And it's pretty simple. Instead of removing the entire stage, all you do is you remove this, replace it with nil, and recompile it. And now everything's still running, um, but we do not have a fragment stage. Um, I haven't tried doing a pull G with this yet, so let's see what happens if we do occlusion pipeline. Yes, that actually worked. So you can see that there is only a vertex stage here. Here's your vertex stage, blah, 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 and nothing else. That is what I wanted to see. So that's a new feature in Keppel, um, or at least it's a feature that always should have been there, but I didn't understand. Hey, Maddie, Maddie Ann, how are you doing? I'm very sorry. I'm not going to be pushing tonight because just before the stream, I fucked up some stuff in my Git config, and I'm not going to get it fixed in time. And we have more important things to do. So. First thing we've done is now we don't need a fragment stage. Whoop. And we have to write some nonsense here. And that nonsense is going to be um, this compute shader that we've got to change from HLSL to essentially GLSL, but our lisp. Um, and this is the one that is actually doing the culling. So we've, as a quick recap, if I go back to base uh, and make this bigger so it's actually readable, we have rendered um, these things into the seclusion buffer, this guy, and then we generated a MIP chain from it. So we downsampled in a sensible way, uh, taking the max on each downsample 
and then we're blitting that. So we're blitting level zero here. If I do this, uh, we're going to start hopefully seeing that this is getting lower and lower resolution. So we're going to sample from this. Let's put that back to zero because it's nicer to look at. And otherwise, you have to look at me. <laughs> Ask Nebish every five minutes. Absolutely. Hold a bit. You might be on bad Wi-Fi, but it sounds like you've got a good drink in hand. I am liking your Vim today, sir. Um, am I allowed to say Vim in, the, in this, pod, in this uh, podcast? Jesus Christ, what's going on? What is happening? Right, so we're going to write some nonsense. And I have already pushed that nonsense into another file. We used to have it in here as a comment. There it is. Okay, so here is the HLSL that we'll be doing. And we're just going to start typing and we'll fix it up as we go. And that's really my job for today is just get this thing ported. Um, occlusion check. And we're going to be passing in some data now. The, one of the big differences between these two is just how they de define and declare what data is coming in. So we'll get to that soon. We will need a uh, declare here because we're doing a compute shader. Uh, it's going to be a local size x. Actually, let's just do it. x, y, and z are all going to be one. We'll work. We'll deal with local work group sizes later on. Um, and yeah. Let's get started. So, make sure that we're not processing more instances than available. Okay. So we're kicking this off. I would have imagined that the compute size would have been based on the number of instances in general. So I'm not sure why this is here. I'm going to start by leaving that out and we'll probably find exactly why that needs to be there later. Um, let's just put a comment here. Um, necessary? Necessart. An underused word, necessart. Okay, so let's start breaking this down. We're going to have to have some instance data to pass in. So let's def struct g. I should check the chat to see how you're doing. Anyone else having audio dropouts? No and no. Good. Sorry, man. That was that's on your end. Um, yeah, I am having the, the mic... I was worried about volume because I'm having it further away to try and not pick up the uh, hovercraft, so yeah, we'll see. Let's call it Oc data, and let's give it a layout that makes it more easy to cohabit with compute, so that should be fine. Um, actually, is that necessary? I don't know. Because this is the per instance data. Let's take that out for now and see how it behaves, because we're not going to be accessing that through an SSBO, are we? Wait, it's not per instance data anymore. Because, yeah, okay, fuck that. No, it does have to be. This is a compute stage. Oh, I'm in different territory now. Okay, so we're going to have a, a bounding box minimum and a bounding box maximum. I... Mm. How am I jumping over there? Ah, wait. I have this trackpad turned on. That needs to go off right now because otherwise there is going to be much swearing. Okay, so bbox max, and we also need a world matrix because that's what we're going to be writing out. So the idea is we're going to be taking this bounding box, we're going to be looking up its positions in this occlusion. Look, not pointing with fingers. Oh, he can be taught. Uh, we're going to look up in the occlusion map to see if this thing should be occluded at the certain MIP layer, and then if it isn't occluded, we write its world matrix and some details out to um, an SSBO, which we'll get to. Uh, that's the idea anyway. So let's do this. What is wrong with this? All of the things, Chris. Um, we're unable to work out the layout for the type of VMAP4. Really? That's interesting. I have not seen this before. So you're telling me that a matrix four in the struct has an issue? That will rather put a damper on this fucking episode if I can't do that. Okay, let, let's let's check out a couple of things here. Let's just see if it's related to layout. It is. Huh. <laughs> do we really want to be debugging the code that handles layouts? Oh no. This is done at compile time, isn't it? Yeah, let's have a look. Oh boy. Hmm. 
Yep, this is the layout calculating code. Oh, joy. Right, so... Let's look where it got to. Um, calculate column matrix layout. And we got down to this error because it didn't recognize it. So VMAT4. We're off to a sterling start. Now, this is the type, but So it's looking up the type in this thing of pairs, and it's expecting to be laid out like that. So it's expecting this to be a symbol? Hmm, that's not going to work, is it? Let's see if this ASOC kind of stuff is anywhere else in here. No, of course it's not. All right. Um, I'm kind of intrigued to see if this is a mistake in that it shouldn't be these type objects being passed in, which seems wrong. Um, I would have expected that it would be type objects. Ah, let's see, how are types treated in other places? Type. Okay, no, this these are doing these are doing lookups into this stuff. So I am pretty sure that is meant to be a type object. In which case this is just wrong, isn't it? Um In that case, can we just swap this out with a type case? Time will tell. Um, do, 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 do. Track player plus Emacs on laptop plus pointing at screen. <laughs> I'm in heaven. <laughs> Am I pointing at screen already? Fucking what? I thought I was on top of it today. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've reached the hmm, interesting point very early. Oh, and I knew it. Mm. It doesn't matter. We are here and we will have fun or we will laugh at me. And my laptop with the chat just decided to go into screensaver mode. I think that's gonna be happening a lot today. So, type. VMAT, actually, we can just do this. Let's take this stuff. Let's dump it. That's a terrible idea, Chris. Let's just take this whole thing. Dump it in here. Pop this out. Okay. Now, get rid of that top. Yes, I want to delete for all cursors. That's what all cursors is all about. Right. Um, and this is the specification. Array type spec. Fine. Cool. And then the last case will just be if it's of type T, which will match everything. Then we do this. Okay. Why will this be wrong? Who knows, but it will be. Oh, it is ridiculous what doesn't work in this thing. Um, okay, so that seemed to agree this time, which is quite nice. Um, let's hope that's correct. We'll see soon enough when we try and make SSBOs. Um, <laughs> let's make a clickbait title. Amazing, he tries. <laughs> and discovers it. You wouldn't believe what can be done with programming language from the 1960s. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, it's so bad. The only person that can do that and be completely acceptable is Davey504. That man just, oh, it's like an art form, how he just leans into that horrible part of the culture and is, Mwah. masterpiece. Okay, so, we're trying to make a struct and we're already having to fix Keppel. It's a good day. Right, let's start writing. Um... So we'll do with slots. We're going to take out those fields. So bbox um, min, bbox max, and world. Um, we're going to be getting that from the instance data. So we should really stick that in a bar somewhere. So let's get data is, and then we're going to aref into something, I guess. Um, it's really interesting. like. How do you know what size this is? This is one of the places where supporting unsized arrays will be really helpful. Do we support that? We might. 
But how would that work when you're making SSBOs? I don't know. Sounds a bit crap. Um, for now, I'm going to assume a fixed size. Let's just do that. Devstruct G, um, and then we'll have oc, um, yeah. Object oc data is, um, what's happened? A slot called arg, or r, and it will be, um, what's it going to be? It's going to be oc data, and there's going to be a thousand of them. Let's start with that. Boop. And yes, you're right. If we're going to do this, we really should give it a layout. Um, define the GPU structs. Oh yes, of course. We need to have we need to have a layout because the internal ones have a layout too. Um, layout SD four thirty. Set for that. Hopefully this compiles. Hurrah! So let's assume this is getting passed in, um, and then the data is going to be. Um, like inst data, and we're going to look it up based on thread ID, which I guess for us is going to be GL, um, what was it called? Invocation something, wasn't it? GL invocation ID. I think that was the global one. Oh no, I don't have my GL help set up on this. I am now alone in a sea of confusion. <laughs> yeah, get that YouTube money. Right. Push that around. Good. Now we've got our data. Excellent. Isn't this easier than just writing GLSL? Isn't it? Isn't everything better when you have to debug every part because you decided to make it more complicated than it needs to be? Yes. Let's start. Um, okay, so we're going to get box size is bbox max minus B box min. See, if I'd used that other keyboard, I would have had a real excuse this week for why I'm, why I'm so bad at typing. Not that you don't already know that I'm bad at typing. Um, box corners, I think we're going to do this with vector. Vector. Um, and so it's B box min. It's interesting that they're doing X, Y, Z here. It implies that they're using um, four component vectors, which might actually have been sensible because of how fucking wafty three component vectors are um, layout wise. It's probably fine if everything else is, oh God, if everything's working, then it'll all be okay. Okay. So, plus, there's gonna be a lot of these. Vbox min um, plus vec3, um, Box size mercy x and then zero zero cool three four five six seven um and we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this and then we need to go y and z And then this one is actually a swizzle of box size X and Y with zero. Yep, so that's X, Y. This one is going to be Y, Z. And then this is going to be X and Z. Have I missed any? Pointing with my finger again. X, Y, Z, X, Y, Y, Z. The one where it's split, and then just plus size. Cool. Now hopefully that does something. Also, we should actually just put the um, values at the end of this shader. Can we compile this? Will that work? No. We've got some things that are invalid. Say it ain't so. Um, I'm just gonna put something in between 
in the let statement because I know it's going to have an issue with that. Okay. Following argument specif. Oh, of course, right. Okay, so I've specified one argument here, and it was garbage. I'm really enjoying. Oh yeah, I'm having to work on Windows as Windows today as well, so that's extra fun. Uh, oh yeah, it can't find int data, which makes sense. So now we can actually specify something. Uniform. Um, I will remember how to write things. We are going to have int data. It is going to be of type obj oc data. It's going to be an SSBO. We're going to get rid of this error and we're going to make a new one. Hurrah! Okay, so didn't know how to AREF into that, which makes perfect sense because that's not quite how it works. Um, it's obj oc data array. Yeah. And GL invocation ID is um, a three, at least a three component vector. So we need to use X. And also, then that's going to be a float, isn't it? Let's see. Um, there is no applicable method for the GLSL function X when. Oh! Hmm. Okay, so that already is an int. Oh, yeah, okay, so GL invocation ID um, wasn't the three dimensional one. I still think it's going to be okay. Um, okay, so there's something called bbox min somewhere. Yep, because I auto completed instead of checking. Um, and. <laughs> and yeah, it's all over the place, Chris. Look at what you have written. Right, and then it's complaining about something else, which I'm sure we'll see in a minute. Box corners. Da da da. It's not being used, but that should be fine. Could not find the correct type for type spec nil. Great. Why? Um, what are we doing as a type spec nil? Do you spot it? Uh, there is one repetition bef first before the last one. Thank you very much. Um, oh yeah, this one. Raise test error, okay. But this just isn't a very helpful error, Chris. Why did you make it like that? What thing? What thing is having the issue? Well, let's uh, recompile it, assuming it's a compute stage, which it is, um, and then we can see where it got to. Arg object nil, type object nil. Whoop de doo! What's this for? Um. Oh. Right, so while we um, we might have found more bugs in Vario. Let's have a look. So I think it might be the code that generates that that does the test compile, so it can give us errors. Is having errors? Um, let's have a look. It would be nice to see. How is it doing this? Okay. go down here, compile form. The stack is deeper. We can keep going. Um, okay, compile form. Let's have a look at this. Right, yeah, this looks like the test code. So occlusion check is a function which takes no arguments. Um, there's the shit we wrote which be do that should be fine. And then we come down here. It's cool with no arguments, great. And that's that. I don't see where this nil has been introduced yet. So maybe it's had some issues. Let's have a look. So if we look at the compute stage object itself, it's got no input variables, so that's fine. 
Uh, but it does have uniform variables. There we go. A uniform variable. What is it? It's called int data, and it has a type of that, which is correct. So why? Why would this be a problem? Yeah, man, this looks okay. So what is it that you do not like? Um, all right. So yeah, it is. It is on that call to occlusion check, and it is trying to find. It's looking at the set of functions. Oh. Okay. I think I might know why. Because there are two external function candidates here. Let's see what they are. One with an in args with nil in it, which is rather disturbing. How is that still around? And then one, ah, oh, okay, right. So, even though that GPU function had invalid argument definitions, it still, the metadata for it still got stored in Keppel. Um, and so it's looking at it, ooh. It's, it's considering it when um, it's being asked to call this function. because so it's finding the local function, then it's finding other external functions that have been defined elsewhere. Okay, so what I can do for now, I'm going to have to come back to this video afterwards and just watch this bit again to file the bug report because I don't want to do that now because it's going to be just finding the right wording is kind of shitty. Um, but what we could do is we could look for where is the best place to fix this or at least hack it into back into behavior. So if we go vario.internals and we look in here and we look for the um, external functions that's that might be it actually um, and then we say well, let's just inspect it and see what we've got yeah it's all looked up by that so if we do get hash um, on this for key which is um, occlusion we get null was it occlusion check was it really yes it was okay you should have just trusted the autocomplete Chris Okay, so there we go, the two functions. Um, wait a second. I think I've actually got code for doing this in, so let's look for delete. Delete, GPU function, um, occlusion check, yeah. There we go. Yeah, it's gone, okay. So start, instead of trying to hack it, Chris, maybe you should just use the fucking functions you wrote to do that. Cool, so now when I compile this, it compiles because it's not trying to check shitty things. All right, that's an interesting case then. Um, oh, Darius, thank you, that's perfect. <laughs> More that's interesting stuff. But there's free soda, so that's good. Yes. It's all right. Compute, uh, compute has my back. Auto complete has my back. Right, let's carry on. Uh, let's just do min z equals one and min x y is one and max x y is zero. We are gonna go through and learn what all this stuff means, but for now, we just need to write it. We are not gonna worry about unrolling the loop. Um, i is 0 and less than i 8 and i um, yes what do we have for postfix add um, okay so now we need to do the body of this I was meant to look at that before Never mind. Okay, so mul. Okay, this is interesting. So box corners, what are you? Okay, that's this array. 
And I'm guessing this has got one, two, three. Hold on. Not quite sure what I'm looking at here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're making a float for taking box corners. All right, who can spot what this is exactly doing? This is multiplying with a projection matrix. So transform world space A, B, B box to NDC. But this is interesting. Can you just mull an entire array and transform, transform all the things in there? I'm just kind of interested how this float for with a one at the end. Oh no, of course we're, we're just indexing into it. Yes, Chris. So it's, yeah, we're just grabbing out a vec. We're grabbing out a vec three and then we're turning it into a float four. Yeah, sorry. I'm not so used to that notation, so I'm, but I've got to get used to it. Okay, so we're going to multiply a view projection um, matrix by um, vec4, actually you can just do this, um, taking ARF of box corners i and 1, okay. And we're gonna have to, we'll have to double check later about the order of these multiplications. Um, again, GLSL and HLSL have different, um, yeah, have different, um, oh, what's it, handedness of their coordinate systems and things like this. So I think this is a pre-multiply in our side. Yeah, we'll have to double check that. We're gonna have other problems as well, so it's okay. And then apparently we just need to set the Z of Clipos um, to the max of the Z of Clipos And um, and zero. Okay. Okay, so we're just clamping that into a certain range. That's okay. We'll have to find out what that is later. Um, clip plus is a vec four now, so that's all right. And this is another thing which I'm not sure if I've actually implemented. What happens if we swizzle on clip pass? What if, what if we set a swizzle? If that's not implemented, we're gonna to have to implement it because that's just that's just stupid if that's not there. Oh it is getting tight in this code. Alright. What happens if we just try to compile this? View projection is undefined. Yes, it is. Um, we should probably do something about that. Oh, okay. Well, it compiled. But I'm really curious to see. Pull G occlusion check. Do -do 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 -do. Okay, yes, that is, it is meant to have the parens around it, fine. So use value, choice zero. Okay, there we are. And we can set a swizzle, good. Would have been weird, I just don't remember implementing it, that was the only problem. Um, but then, there are many things that are lost to my memory. Pompton saying, jokes apart, I love these moments. Not that I like to see her struggling into something, but it just reminds me the guy's normal and does the same job as me. Oh, dude, like, <laughs> if there's anything on this stream, it's that, uh, yes, that this isn't, this is, you, you don't need to be particularly smart to write Lisp. <laughs> Case very much made. Point established. Words repeated. Um... Okay, swizzle, clip boss, x, y. Um, this should also serve as a warning to the people who like to reinvent the wheel. Uh, it won't, but it should. Uh, clip boss, x, y. 
What are we clamping this to? I'm getting dizzy just looking at it. Right. Minus one and one. So this feels like we're doing the... In fact, let's look at this. It seems like what we're doing here is the standard rendering uh, transformations, right? We're doing the projection. We're clamping on the near plane. We're... Um, this is going to be interesting, actually. If this is near plane, far plane stuff, then we're going to need to look up how, like, what direction and stuff that goes in HLSL. Otherwise, we're probably getting a different behavior. Um, maybe it's fine? Don't know. Um, and then we're doing the... the um, so this is the perspective divide, or the W divide, um, that's done automatically. That's why we set W up um, in the vertex stage. And then we're doing clamping in the X and Y. So this is, is this doing the kind of, um, yeah, are, are we clipping essentially? Are we doing our clip cube stuff? It feels like we could be. And that's pretty neat. Oh, look at the fucking comment, Chris. Transform world space box into NDC. That's exactly what we're doing. Normalize device coordinates. <laughs> Isn't reading fun? Tell your kids. Right. Okay. Um... <laughs> well, at least, at least we can say from that that our intuition is okay. Right. I really hate the, the, all this setting shit. The way this code's written. I mean, it looks fine in in, in a C-ish language, but it looks really arse in this. Um, I'm going to move this down so we can have a little more space. Because I do love writing on these tiny screens. Um, how's the hovercraft noise, by the way? <laughs> I can't hear it at all. Nice. I can. Um, right. We're down on this line. Chris, focus. No. Um, so we're going to be doing this. And we're going to be multiplying this by 0 0.5 minus 0.5. Ah, I recognize this. This is the, the um, you know, the, yeah. Uh, plus. Tell you what, for people thinking about doing these streams, it is it. It doesn't stop being slightly nerve-wracking. There's this just massive body of evidence that most of the time you're just fucking up. I mean, it's fine, but it's also like, uh. okay. Um. Where are we now? We're still doing sets. So, min xy is the min of um, swizzle, get pos xy, and min xy is being the max of clip box, clip pos xy, and max xy. And then min z is a saturate of min and min z and that's not how it's written because you're in the wrong language now min z and clip pos z all right let's compile that and see what happens Ooh, exciting um okay so because the reason there's all these different versions of the error is that it's actually kind of interesting because normally it should collapse these together realizing that this is the same error and say all the stages have had this same error. And I don't know what the difference is between them. Very interesting. We'll have to see what it uses to collapse the information. 
But anyway, it's this bit. When we set min x, y to be min blah, 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 blah. Um, then apparently, it thinks I'm changing the type of this. So apparently, this is an int. That sounds wrong. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Let's have a go have a look. I know exactly what this is going to be. Or it better be that, because otherwise I don't know exactly what it's going to be. Okay, right. Yes, so they have a syntax. might even be in GLSL as well, where because you're saying the type is a float2, and then you're setting it to 1, um, that's going to make a float2 with 1 as... Got to be both arguments, right? It's going to have to be this. Like this. Cool. Min z is undefined. How dare you? I always define my min z's, except when I read my misname them. And once again, long errors set, and it's complaining about types. Yes, and I thought this one I did actually think was going to be an issue, because that place was an int, and then we're setting a float to it. So that's okay. Cool. So we're through, we're through this bit. Our loop isn't unrolled, but we will endure. Enjoy. Right. Um, so, what do we do now? Box UVs is... Okay, so we've made a VEC4. Oh, I wish it wasn't written below 4. I could just replace more, but then I might confuse myself even more. Who knows? Yeah, let, let's leave it a straight H HLSL. Because otherwise then I'm changing both sides and I'm going to make mistakes on both sides. Okay, so let's do another let. Let's star, probably. Uh, box UVs. Ah, so this is interesting. This is working out the position that we're going to be looking stuff up, I guess. Let's have a look. Um, is going to be a min, min xy, max xy. There we go. Um, I'm just going to Push this around there and compile. Should compile more frequently. Um, and then we should. Do this. Okay, so the high Z buffer MIP. Okay. So theory wise, what I know is that it's going to, based on the size of the bounding box in this space. We're going to look up to a specific MIP level and read the data from there. Um, oh, hey, Sibus You are late to the party, but you're very welcome to it. Um, <laughs> yeah, the goodies you missed were me uh, running into lots of bugs and generally being confused. Exactly what you expect from this stream. Bugs and confusion. The only difference between this and the older streams is the amount of hair involved. Okay, what time is it, by the way? 21.43. Excellent. Excellent. We're going all right. We have yet to be thwarted by the bugs. All we're trying to do today is get this compute shader converted and compiling, and then we can start reasoning about it and throwing values at it, and that'll be interesting. But there's some cool bits to work out up here, which are going to be very fun, and they involve atomics. Which we played with. Actually, last week's session, for all the just fucking around and reading, we did test quite a few things in compute. And, yeah, it's good. Okay, so... What have we got? You're meant to be doing things, Chris. Calculate. Um, size is multiply minus uh, max xy for the min xy. Interesting. Okay. So we can't just keep that? You're not going to be doing that multiple places? I guess not. Okay. Um, so what we've worked out is a 2D bounding box for our for our object. Um, yes. Yeah, I think I know what's going on there. We'll see. And then this RT size. What's RT size? I don't know you. It's not in there. Who the fuck is RT size? 
God damn it, it was going well, and now you're gonna throw in completely undefined variables? How dare you. Oh, maybe RT size is a, yeah, sure, um, is a direct text thing. RT size, um, let's just do that, let's see what it is. Ooh, it seems to be a thing. So look. What are you? Or is this just gonna be the, meh, RT size. Nope, it's just a name they use. Oh, render target size. Ah. But if it's not something that's in the standard, then where is it coming from? Um, there's exactly three uses of it. There, and there, and there. Um, but one thing we haven't checked yet is that this thing was saying occlusion culling is implemented with Compute Shader with Compute Shader, based on the code from Stephen Hill's blog post. This one. Um, and I'm sorry, Stephen, I really should read this. It probably is going to teach me all the things I need to know. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, this is... This is going to be great. This is going to be really good fun. I'm going to read this, and we'll go through it um, quickly on stream another day. Um, but this is super exciting to me. But we are just going to go and look for RT size. It's not there. Okay. <sighs> okay, let's uh, let's go down here. Where was RT size got from again? Gotten from. A phrase that is stereotypically American, even though it's a traditional English phrase that just went out of fashion. Okay, so high Z buffer MIP. Some seal log 2 stuff. That that will probably be in here somewhere. Okay, here we go. This is going to be, this is the high Z bounding box level, a high Z MIP level thing. Okay, so there's the There's the size. Interesting. Uh, I was just double checking that this bit in particular, even though, wow, it highlights white on a nearly white background. That is pretty special. Um, okay, so let's look at, we've got seal log two max size, blah, blah, blah. Is that the bit? Oh no, so there's a multiply by RT size XY. Is that the viewport? Ah, that's probably the viewport thing he's doing there. That seems feasible. And that would be 512, 512 for us. Um, that's the only multiplier I'm seeing though, in that area. I'm gonna make a guess it's that. Um, so yeah, render target size. Now, can we get that with just um, what's the what's the thing for that GL? Um, oh really? Oh yeah, I'm in HLSL. That's why. Uh, size. Come on, Chris. Go over there and search for size. Point size, workgroup size. No. There's no viewport index, no. Um, FBO, window, god damn it, what's it called? I can't remember. There is, there is a viewport size in GLSL, isn't it? Oh, Zulu's way ahead. RT stand for render texture. Um, render texture or render target or something like that. Um, oh, thanks for linking the uh, article I've been kind of farting around with as well. Let's just make the assumption and uh, we'll come back to it. 512 by 
check this. Um, Goodo, let's uh, let's carry on. Okay, so size is that and MIP. Now they calculate the MIP by clamping. MIP, no they don't, they do that afterwards. They take the ceiling, the seal of um, log2 max x of size y of size okay yeah that makes sense so you're just squaring it off and then taking a log of that so yeah taking taking the larger side taking the log two so what power of two we are we're interested in power twos because our mip maps go down in power of two size right and then they're taking the seal of that so we're rounding up that actually makes a lot of sense and that gives us our mip number don't Okay, and we also want to clamp it. So let's do MIP here. Clamp, MIP, zero, and max MIP level. So we're gonna have to define that somewhere. Um, what should we do? We'll just shove this here for now. Max MIP level is going to be, um, well, uh, yeah, I suppose that uh, we can we can pass that in as a uniform. Let's go there. And that's going to be an int. And so for us, that is going to be probably 10. Let's have a look. Where's our occlusion stuff? Um, let's look at base. Doop, doop, doop. Ah, we've got a chain of textures. Wait a second, no, we, we generate all these MIP chains, don't we? Let's see what this is. Chain of textures it is not written like that, Chris. You know it's not. Everyone knows it's not. Okay. That's actually a problem. Because we've got them as separate textures right now, which is wrong. Um, we wanted to have them as MIP maps so we could just reach into them. Why did we do this? It was on stream last time and we did it for a reason and I can't remember. Because this is a problem. It needs to be one texture with loads of MIPs. Um, with yeah, with all the MIP levels, so we can sample from it in this one compute stage. But I will have broken this up for some reason, and it will be based on a misunderstanding of GL for sure. Um, let's go down here and leave this code in a compiling state. Um, that actually compiles, so that's good. Let's see if we can rediscover why I was wrong. Okay, so I was making samplers. I was making samplers. And the reason I had samplers was, let's go have a look at render because we can find it down there. Downscale. Downscale uses texture gather. And texture gather, as far as I remember, doesn't have a way of specifying uh, the MIP level you're reading from. A sampler always takes a texture. So how would we get the data? How can we use texture gather to get a to read from a specific MIP level? Um, the bell, the bell. The bells, right? Zulu's saying, um, "Yes." Oh, from from what you're looking up, you have to pass it as uniform. Cool, that's good to know. Um, the size of the render target viewport could be wrong. Um, <laughs> we do this every time. Yeah, a dance as old as time itself. Right, so. 
we're using texture gather because that's the thing the the closest equivalent I could find of the thing in DirectX that lets you get four neighboring pixels from a texture at once in one sample. But we need to go and do some reading now because clearly we've got some problems. Uh, so GLSL um, and what are we looking for? Um, gather. Texture gather. Here we go. Texture gather offsets. Sampler. Specifies the texture coordinates at which the texture will be sampled. Um, specifies the component of the source texture that will be used to generate the resulting vector. Good. Returns the value, blah, blah, blah. If specified, the value of comp must be constant integer expression with a value of blah, 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 blah. Identifying this, yes. If And this is the property we want, that we're gathering four things at once and they're the ones we need. Oh. Offsets. Yeah, that doesn't specifies an array of offsets from the specified texture coordinate from which the textiles be gathered. Again, we don't need those offsets. That's, that's not something we need to do, but we definitely need to be able to talk about a specific layer. Um, there was more information about texture gather, I'm very sure. But if we're going down to a specific MIP level, we'd have, in my mind, we'd use Texel Fetch. So I'm pretty sure that that gives you that support. Texel Fetch, there we go. Boop. LOD, bam. The level of detail within the texture from which the Texel will be fetched, yes. Because here we're specifying a specific Texel. Um, I knew I said pixel earlier and I knew that was wrong. Okay. Many and oh yeah for for that information we for the uh, for the size of the target buffer that's definitely something we could pass up as a um, as a uniform so we can just go what is it um, does FBO actually have a, a size for what we're doing no but we can get the FBO attachment so yeah I mean we just pass up five twelve by five twelve or the size of the base attachment on the FBO what FBO would it be it would probably be the occlusion buffer wouldn't it. Is that the one? Probably, yes. In fact, it definitely is. Um, attachment, we can get D, which is this, and we can already see um, that we can get dimensions from this, and we get 512 by 512. Um, so yeah, that would probably be the way we'd grab that, or, or something similar. But for now, we'll just stick with the hard-coded value, but that is right, we can probably pass it up as a uniform. In fact, maybe we should shove it as a uniform and then just hard-code it on the other side. Maybe. The th yeah. yeah let's, let's worry about that later, though. Keep forgetting I'm on Windows here. Um, where are we time-wise? Okay, so we are nearly done with the first hour. This is a good time to have a problem, and this is a problem. Um, Let's just do texture gather um, LOD. Who knows? Oh look, an extension. <laughs> okay, so they decided not to do that. But, but this is all based on some GLSL code. Let's have another look at their implementation because I am now curious. Where was their downsizing one? Here. 
they did. Okay, so let's do HLSL gather. No, offset location has to be a float two for the texture two. Sample estate, yeah, but this starts making me think that we should be able to make samplers for individual levels. It's like, can we? That would be kind of interesting. Mercer's saying, wait, it's baggers on new background. What is this? I mean, let's hear. The Kickstarter has done, yes. I mean, the, the hair was just, I mean, you know, they grow up, you have to let them go. Um, how? How does this work? Right. Let's let's think about this again. <sighs> so we render this depth information, right? And then we pass that off to off to this function. Sorry, this one here. That reads from that and creates the downscaled version. We write that out to some FBO. Um, and whatever that place we write it out to, whatever texture we write it out to, we then take that one and then we downsample that. And then we take the one it downsamples into and we downsample that, yada yada yada, down the chain, right? Now, it's fine if we're rendering each one into a separate texture because texture gather should just work. But if these places we're writing into are just mipmaps of a single texture, then how do we do the next step? That's the bit I don't get. How do we do this given that the sampler, a sampler is always for a texture, not a single mipmap level of a texture, I think? That would be kind of wild if you could do that. But I thought I thought you couldn't just uh, take a sample a sampler from a um, level of a texture, right? I thought you had to sample the whole texture and then you use the explicit LOD settings on a bunch of the functions to be able to get these values. I mean, we could fudge it, right? We can just do text all fetch from all the different places and do max on them. But I don't, I don't like that because they can do it. Why the fuck can't I do it? What am I doing wrong? It's grinding my gears. Um, oh yeah, the background. I'm down at a friend's office because I have some family over and I didn't want to be shouting at them for two hours or shouting in the corner of the room for two hours and they haven't just kind of sit silently and put up with it. Um, so this is our mystery. In fact, this might be the mystery of the rest of the stream. How does gather fucking work? Um, is anything mentioned here about MIP? No. Right. MIP map. Sampler. Here we go. Gather. Do, do, do. Okay, standard filtering abilities are sometimes useful. That's cool. So we're bypassing that. I forgot that already. Okay, so it is sometimes useful to be able to bypass filtering altogether. In order to do that uh, for textures that are two-dimensional, must fetch values for the four texels nearest a given texture coordinate. OpenGL provides the following function to do that. Gather. Gather offset. Gather offsets. Okay, single offset. IBEC2. Multiple offsets. Oh, right, yeah, so you can provide an offset for each of the um, things being read. Well, that's cute, actually. So you can really look around to find... Um... Wait. What if you're meant to use offsets? What if you're meant to use offsets increasingly wide? And then you're, all... and you're doing it from just one... You're doing it from the original occlusion buffer. Shimera was fucking saying that in the very first stream when we started implementing this. And I'm like, nah, probably not that. No, because... No, 
I don't think that's right. Because you take the four and you take the max of them, right? And then you make that new texture. And then you take the four from that texture and max those. You can't just be using the original one. No, I don't think you can just use the original one. That feels wrong. Okay, um, these functions only fetch a single component from the texture specified by component, uh, which defaults to zero. Again, that's perfect for us because we're reading from a depth buffer. All filtering is ignored for these functions. All filtering is ignored for these functions. And they only access, access textiles from the texture's base mipmap layer. I knew I read that from somewhere, right? So if we're only able to read from the base mipmap layer, then that has to be coming from... Yeah, it's tautological. It has to be coming from the base layer so we have to be rendering into a new texture. But then we want to sample it. So then so then we want this to be written into. Then we want these to be the mipmap levels of a single texture. So that when we kick it over to the compute shader, we can pick the mipmap level. That sucks. <laughs> I don't like this. Um, How are they doing it? This is the problem with the fact that you know that it works. So you know there's got to be a way. What we might have to do is search on GitHub to see who else has implemented this tutorial because it's way too well written for there not to be someone who's implemented it. And so we can see if I, we can find a GLSL version and find out how they did it. But we're gonna have to look into this again. Because look, when they're doing their gather, this is the HLSL version. They're passing in the sampler. So in, okay, in uh, HLSL, it's a little different from GLSL. Um, they have in their shader code that you specify, here's the texture that we are going to be gathering from. Here is the, um, oh, I just realized where RT comes from. Is that the RT size we were worried about before? I think it is. Okay, so, never mind. <laughs> if fuck's sake right this is the texture and this is how we're sampling that texture which is interesting that you need a sampler when if it's going to bypass their one bypasses filtering as well but all right um and then And then they're using the thread ID plus 0.5, which is sampling, yeah, into the center of the texel, I guess. And then they're... That's interesting. Does their gather work from the kind of normalized coordinate, 0 to 1? Not time to think about that. And then divided by the size. Okay. But yeah, they're doing a simple gather. So I assume, I mean, you, we, we can tell right here that they're not specifying the LOD, the uh, mipmap layer. So what? unless that is defined by DirectX samplers, and then we've got our own little problem. Um, yeah, this is the only place. They only mention samplers here. So we don't know what how they're setting the sampler. Um, uh, what's it going to be? It is really intriguing. Now I'm just going quiet because I don't know what to read. Um, yeah, it's great. This should be, I mean, that sounds great, but that suggests separate textures. Um, oh, wait, here it is. Okay. 
The disadvantage to this approach is that since Gather does not support mid-level selection, you will have to create a different shader render target per mid-level and bind them successively during downsampling. Separate shader render target view per mid-level. I wish I could GL speak that. Alternatively, you use four texture reads. I don't want to. I really want to do this right with sample level to accept to select the MIP to read from. So in this case, in GSL, this would be Texel fetch, specifying the LOD. That's absolutely what that is. But this bit, this is the fucking bit that we need to work out. I'm gonna. I'm gonna paste it because it's so exciting. Right, um, compute dot HLSL. No, um, compute foo. This is the mystery. Okay. Oh, fill region didn't work too well there. Fine then. I'll do it by hand. I really want this written down somewhere I can just stare at it. Ideas, people. Do, do, do that'll be the day when the whole family joins in with some serious GPU list and bugging. <laughs> now they're they're actually being social. They're just they're just hanging out and having a good time and catching up. It's been a while since they've been over, so it's really nice. And I'm I ran away, so I'm the problem tonight. Hey, don't make assumptions about yeah yeah. Leave my family alone. They're awesome. Medians generalizing. Um, okay, Zulu is saying in the next paragraph they mention it. Yes, they mention that you end up running the compute four times. Yeah. Okay. Right. So yeah, that that bit is the. Where's the four times thing? Is this the paragraph you're talking about? That's all right, Zulu. So that is kind of right. So what we do is we take um, we take the first level and we use this downsample, downscale thing to produce this. And then we take this and we downscale it to this and then downscale it to this. The problem we're having is that textual gather, which is the perfect function we want to use, can only read from the base mid layer. So to me, that says they have to be separate textures. Um, but maybe I'm wrong. So let's look into, let's just look into samplers. Maybe there's something I've either forgotten or just never understood about mitmaps in here. So we're going to go through everywhere that it says, that this sounds like it's probably going to be the one that we're interested in, but we're going to read through everywhere that has mitmap mentioned. Map men, right. Um, Mip mapping works based off the angle and size of the rendered primitive relative to the window and its texture mapping. This is computed internally by taking the derivative of the texture coordinate passed to the texture sampling function. Fine. However, this is only possible in the fragment shader. In any other uh, shader stage, there is no rendering primitive yet. Uh, there may be a vertex or a primitive, but the space of the primitive relative to the window is unknown, so der derivations can be not implicitly computed. Okay, so. Oh, that's see. This is worth reading anyway. Because of this, if you're using texture sampling functions, even regular sampling functions that require implicit derivations in non-fragment shader stages, they will only access texels from the base mipmap level. The description of the functions below will state if if they need explicit derivatives. That's cool. Also, some of the following functions allow for an optional bias parameter. That would be cool. Um, we don't get bias in here, do we? No bias. No bias. Boo. Get offset, but no bias. No. Okay, back, back. Where were we? We were learning over here. Uh, we're gonna have to get into this, which is gonna be interesting. Um, that's another time though. 
Here we go, texture mipmap retrieval. Okay, this is often used to fetch the number of mipmap levels that are available in a particular texture associated with a sampler. Oh, it was only in 4.3, so that's not gonna be the thing we're looking for. Texture sampling functions like texture LOD, which take an explicit mipmap level, will clamp their inputs to the range yada yada, which is the return value from the function. Samplers that modify, that for, oh sorry, sampler types that forbid mipmaps cannot be used with this function. Okay, fine. The function does not require implicit derivatives. Whew. What section is this? Non-uniform fragment flow. Yeah, we'll get to that. Texture size re uh, retrieval. Texture mipmap retrieval. Um, LOD texture access? Okay, maybe I've understood, misunderstood LOD as well. If you want to compute the mitmap LOD parameter entirely on your own, instead of pre, instead of biasing the pre-computed LOD, you may use this function. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna need to come back another day and read about this. It's not the time, but it's super interesting. Uh, gradient texture ac uh, access. Keep going. This is the, the problem right there. I'm gonna check the chat again soon, see if you guys have worked it out. Oh man, direct texel fetches, this is the exciting ones. Uh, fetch and fetch offset with your LODs there. LOD specifies which mitmap level to sample from. Yeah, that's good, that is what I understood it to be. If the sampler type does not have mitmaps, the parameter will not be present, sure. Uh, the offset version applies an integer texel offsets to yada yada yada. Texel fetch is the only texel function that takes multi sample and buffer, sa buffer samples. Um, Jesus. Oh, do you get, get out of the way? Um, so, as far as I can tell, I'm just going to get a tissue. Ugh. So, as far as I can tell, samplers are just going to be taking the whole texture. So, that's going to be a problem. Okay, let's see. Um, sorry, as many times as you need to produce the required number of MIPS. Exactly, yes. And that bit, that bit I was fine with. Like, we're going to have to keep down sampling. And we can keep writing out. And we can create, like, 10 FBOs. And each of those FBOs have, um, as their attachment, one mipmap level from the texture we want to produce. Completely fine, that's great. The problem is, the problem is, if we put the result of one into a mipmap level, then we can't use texture gather on the next, you can't use that texture as the input, and then, oh actually, we wouldn't be able to use it as the input anyway. Right, because you can't have it the input and the output be coming from the same texture. So, what if we did this? What if we take a texture? What if we have two outputs from our fragment from our, our fragment stage, right? We have one where we write the result, and the second one, so that's in one texture. Can we do that? Can we have multiple attachments from different textures? I think we can, can't we? Yeah, of course it makes sense. Yes, yeah, so we'll write the result to one texture, and we write it to the base level, and we also write the result to one of the MIP levels on the other one. That's pretty interesting. But sizes? I think that matters. We're gonna have to see how this is written. Um, yes, and that's, that, that's, what, that's what I'm agreeing with there. I think that's what meant by you will have to create a different, okay, let, let, me, uh, let me read all of what you've said to make sure I get it right. Right, so yes, yeah, so you take one pass, create a MIP from that, then use that as the next base texture. Um, then again and again. I think that's what's meant by you will have to create a different shader render target view per MIP map level, and then bind them successfully, success, successively during downsampling. 
I'm going to read what you said again because I think you're onto it. Um, but so you take one pass, right? Yep. Create a MIP from that. So we're, we're doing our down sample and we have data. We have to write it out to a texture or to an FBO. Our FBO attachment is going to be uh, an image, a GPU array in our case. Um, and that can be one of the MIP levels of a texture. I wish I had my doodle device. It's perfect time for a doodle device session. But if we write the data into one of those MIPs, we then can't use that in the next pass, right? Because it's in a non-base MIP level. Um, and so we went, oh, okay, that's fine. We'll just create a shit ton of textures. Um, where is it? Chain of textures. There we go. Then we write into each one successfully. And, um, and it's always the base texture, and that's always fine. And that works up to a point, but then you get, of course, we get into the situation. Now we want to actually have it as one texture so we can read from each of those levels, and we can't. So, um, I think what we do is we take, it's very interesting, I think we take this, the original occlusion buffer, or maybe we'll just create another texture. We'll make the texture that's 512 by 512. We'll add all of the all of its MIP levels. So we have like 10, whatever this is. Um, yeah, it should be nine here. Nine here plus the 512 by 512 is 10. So that's 10 layers. We write to one of these and we write to the, the specific MIP level of that other texture. We do that all the way down. And that way we're always populating one at a MIP level and we're also populating one of these, uh, which has a base level which we can sample from. Feels janky though. Feels janky, but it might be the way to do it. Um, let's go have a look. Let's have a look. It at least makes some sense, you know? Like at least it makes some kind of twisted logic anyway. Um, So we are going to need, along with our chain textures, um, <sighs> oc mip chain. Now I'm going to call this the occlusion chain texture. It's a bit term overloady here, but it'll it'll work. And then, um, when we reset this stuff, I'm going to call free on this. We're going to come down here. Um, we're going to make a texture. It's going to have no initial comment, uh, contents. It's going to have dimensions that come from uh, VP size, not VP size list. Which one was it? VP, just VP size. Um, yep, that's 512 by 512, and actually we'd like it as a list. Oh yeah, so it is that. You numpty. VP size list. I thought that was the uh, the chain for a minute. So yeah, 512 by 512, perfect. Right? And then mip map, we're going to say true for yes please. It's going to generate mip maps, we're not going to turn that off, it doesn't matter. But we will get all of our layers. Then, what do we do next? Um, trying to see what it'll be. Um, I think that's it. No, we need we need an element type, of course. So the element type is going to be float. We're just going to do that. That's the one we use down here as well. Um, where did size come from in this? That looks convenient. Oh, for, for size in the chains. There we go. Numpty. All right, okay. So we take that. I think that's roughly correct. So then we would get... We have our texture that's 512 by 512 with 10 MIP levels. And now... Hmm. Yep, that works. Okay, so now we need 
each FBO that's made is going to have two attachments. This. I think this is correct. Okay. What happens if I just do this? Boom! Okay. Correct. No, this is correct. Okay, so it got down to the second one. It's like, wait a second. Um, two of the attachments that you're trying to put into this FBO are different sizes. And I'll show you why. Um, it's because we can't use occlusion chain texture here. We want to do text ref um, and get the mitmap level we want to use i. And we're going to do for i from zero. Because this is this is bounding the number of times we're going to iterate. So we just count i from zero and everything will be fine. Hopefully, if we do this now, this is going to fuck a lot of things up. OK. All right. Actually, yes, that is also correct. And we'll see why soon too. Um, so yeah, continue, that's right. This is actually meant to be I from one. So we already have the 512 by 512 one. That texture's already made. So how are we gonna get that populated then? That's annoying. We're gonna have to have something just blit that in? Ugh. All right, let's let's keep going. Test. Cool. That made some FBOs. Good. Um, and then samplers. Let's do that. So that's actually done. Whew. And we're also going to have to set up a sampler for this. And this is just going to be sample um, the occlusion chain texture. Now, what I am going to do, I'm going to specify filters, even though we're using going to be using gather and we won't be using the filters. I still want to do this. So, minify filter. Ah, oh, they're linear. What's the options? It's nearest, isn't it? Nearest, mitmap, nearest. I think that's what we want. Or is it just nearest? I am going to need to look up the details behind that. Um, uh, sampler. Okay, so let's go and check the documentation for sampler. And then we go nearest. Oh, I love having good documentation. Right, okay. If linear is used, the implementation will perform a weighted linear blend between the two adjacent samples, fine. The minification filter is controlled by the filter min fil texture min filter parameter. <coughs> Sorry. To understand these values better, it's important to discuss what the particular options are. Here is a full list. Okay, so there they are. Doing minification um, you can choose to use mip mapping or not. Using mip mapping means selecting between multiple mip maps. That's correct, yes. Whether you, use, whether you use mip mapping or not, you can still select between linear blending or the other particular um, of the particular layer or nearest. Uh, and if you do use mip mapping, you can choose to either select a single mip map to sample from, or you can sample the two adjacent mip maps and linear, linearly blend uh, resulting values to get the final result. Okay, let's have a look. So we don't want it to be linear within the MIP level. So that's good. Um, it has MIP mapping though. I suppose that makes sense. And then linear between MIP levels also no. I think this is correct. I think we just specify...
has mint mapping. That sounds to me like when you're sampling, it can choose which uh, mint map level to use, and we kind of don't want that. So maybe nearest is just the one we use. I think I think we'll go with nearest. We'll go with nearest, and then we'll we'll find out because it's not like this is gonna be the only problem. Um, okay, so let's just do nearest. Um, what is it? Magnify filter. Oh fuck! I should have kept that documentation open. Okay, let's go. Sample. Take it comes from a sampler, and um, magnify filter. Oh, it's just linear or nearest. That is absolutely fine. Um, cool. So that's okay. Woo! Oh yeah, and this doesn't exist yet. That is also right. Let's go up here. Def, uh, I like that we're keeping going through the problems today, though. There's been a few weeks that that just felt really rough. And today we're getting somewhere. Good. There's that. Um, and we'll do... Just keep going. Just keep going. Okay, so now the nice thing is our chain of FBOs have two attachments. The first one, um, which is the separate texture which we've been using so far, and the second one is one of the MIP levels of this occlusion chain texture. Um, and then what we can do is when we're doing our down sample shit, um, where is it? Where are you? Um, gen MIP chain. Um, when we're doing this, and we do with GPU array as your map, map, make GPU, where is it? How dare you? Um, downscale it, there it is. Why did it jump up there? That just confused the pants off me. Stupid. Right. Downscale it, yeah, when we use that. Is there anything else we have to do? No, we're already using with FBO bound, so it's it is bound, that's correct, right? And then we go here, we're gonna say val is this, right? And then we do values, val and val. Uh, symbol depths is unidentified, yep, because that should be a let star. All right, okay, so now we should be populating, already we should be populating both of those, which is really cool. The only thing we don't have now is that that, um, ooh, lights have gone outside. I guess someone's wandering around. The, uh, what was I gonna say? Let's go back to base. We can see, we can see it clearly. Um, this occlusion chain texture, its base mitmap level isn't populated, right? Or it's full of garbage or whatever. Um, so that's interesting. What are we going to do about that? Um, it's kind of annoying. It would be really helpful if we just wrote into that in the first place. I suppose we can't because then we... So I guess we just need to blit into that one. That's kind of it. Um... And we have a thing for doing that. So maybe we just maybe we just do that. So we've got this blit thing here, blit it. So let's just do that. So that means we need now we need an FBO for this as well. Good grief. So much bloody stuff. No, uh, what is it? Occlusion chain texture, this one. <sighs> okay, so, man. Really does feel like I'm doing this wrong, but I cannot spot another way of doing this. Um, so we'll just have to keep going. Make FBO. 
Um, and yeah, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to take um, do list zero because it's attachment zero, and um, we're just going to take the um, occlusion chain texture. And because we're passing in the whole texture, it's going to take the base level, uh, base layer as it. Um, we could specify that explicitly, but just by saying text ref like this, that's all it's going to do. So we can do that. Um, done. So we've got that FBO now. And then we can um, gen MIP chain. The first thing we can do is just go blit it. And we're going to blit one thing into something else. So we're going to go ah, uh, with FBO bound. Um, and the FBO is going to be that one we just made. We're going to write into it. And what we're going to write in is um, whatever is currently in here, which is this. Um, is it? Hmm. No, it's probably one before that. It, it'll be yes, it's that one. That's the one. Okay. Let's do that. Woo! Okay. Right. Now where are we? Now I really want to see if that thing has been properly populated. Um, this would be a really good time to have a uh, render doc on hand. That's what we need to do. We need to set up render doc again so we can start examining this data more clearly. Um, but that is all right. Zulu has carried on with the information. This is really cool. Rather than chain, can you just use two textures, textures, your real texture you're writing out your MIPS to and a working version? The working texture only needs the size of the base MIP. You could do that, right. You could absolutely do that. But then what you have to do is when you're doing downscale it, um, you need to make sure that you're uh, creating these UVs properly. Um, and that's really it. You would just have to, um, yeah, you would just scale your UVs. So we could totally could do that. I think that's, um, I think, uh, would you need three? I don't know why you'd need a third one. Yeah, so I, I think you could do that. But we really need to check that this thing is correct. So it would be really nice, actually, if Blit would let us specify a level of detail. Um, we could do that. What can we do here? Um, now, what things allow us to get level of detail? The only one was Texel Fetch. And for that, we're actually indexing in Texel space, not in this kind of normalized 0 to 1 space. We're actually dealing with the coordinates. So let's just make a friendly extra one. And oh, should we combine them? Yeah. Let's do this. Let's just say MIP level is an optional argument. And yeah, it's straight up optional. Um, and if it's specified, we're going to use a different implementation. So map G, um, blit LOD. And what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to look at the sampler. So let's just go and get a sampler so we can test this. So occlusion buffer sampler. There we go. Um, I don't think sampler has a size because that, I mean, that wouldn't make much sense. But maybe I do have a helper function for this. No, I don't see that. So we can get the sampler texture. Um, yep. Yeah. The sampler texture, like this. Then we can do text ref um, with the mip map level. So let's say maybe at level zero. Um, and then we can get the dimensions, which are, uh, what is it? Let's just do texture. Is it just dimensions? Come on now. Texture base dimensions, there we go. Oh. That's interesting, okay. 
So the fact, oh no, we're getting a GPU array. So the right thing to do is actually GPU array um, dimensions. Then we get 512 by 512. It's annoying that it's a it's a list. That's kind of that's kind of disappointing. That means we're allocating a little list every time. Not that it really matters for this, but uh, you know. But we, we're always going to have these shitty allocations. So never mind. Never mind. Um, let's take that. The structure in bind x and y. But we're going to do even more allocations. Let's do this. Um, and this is going to be the sampler. And the mipmap level is going to be the one that's passed in. Now we've got that. Um, we can say size is um, x and y. And then the rest of it's going to be the same. Sam and power. That's good. Right, like this. So now we need to define blitlod. Um, so it's going to be like this. It's going to be that. Whoops. Um, and then we're going to take these. Um, well, actually, we can use the same vertex stage. We just need this. Okay. Split, load, frag. And we have one more uniform, which is size. And we really don't need to multiply this in the fragments stage, but we're already writing it now, so who cares? And we are going to be doing something slightly different. We're going to be doing Texel fetch and this has gone into screen saver again um, I will be back to chat soon um, okay I'm just surprised that oh no okay so we won't get hints for that um, let's just look up texel fetch again and make sure we know the arguments so we're gonna be passing in a 2d texture a position and an LOD nice um, a sampler a position yes this one Times size, and then the LOD, which is all oh right. Yeah, we got to pass it up as well, idiot. LOD, um, then raise that to a power and do this shit. Is that really? Nah, it's better here. Okay, like this. Um, oh, by the way, is the text the right size for you guys? I just realized when I'm in opening buffers, the text size has been a bit smaller. Shit, I didn't catch that soon enough. Sorry about that. Um, Zulu saying, can you use texture base dimensions? If you don't do the text ref on the sampler's texture, yes, we can do. Um, but we're actually interested in the size of the MIP level that we are pulling from, I believe. That's a good question, actually. If you're doing Texel fetch, wouldn't that, yeah, you've got to specify which Texel in the MIP map level you're interested in. I think that's correct. We'll see soon enough, actually. Um, and so, uh, yeah, LOD has got to be a uh, uint. I think it's a uint. No, it's an int. Never mind then. Okay, so it doesn't like vec2 and int. Oh yeah, because it's meant to be an ivec2. Um, ooh. Nope. Okay. Um, fine. Ah, pos is, and then we're going to do ivec2 um, right, that should be okay probably not for some reason that I'm just not thinking about right now okay Cannot. IVEC2. Oh, you're an idiot, Chris. Okay, yeah. Size also has to be, uh, is also VEC2. So we need to do X uh, and Y there as well. Cannot be called with float and float. Ah, yes. Okay. Can you just go from float to int like this? Yes, that works. 
I'm not sure what the behavior of that is, so maybe that's a bad idea. But I'm hoping that's just truncating. Let's try it. It might be enough for us to get what we need, so... Oops, shite. Let's try that. Trash Talk! Hello! Um, there is a Lisp Discord. Um, and... I cannot get you the link right now, but one of the lovely people in the chat will. Um, pretty sure a couple of you hang out there. Yes, but the um, IRC as well. Do come down to Lisp Games IRC. That's a nice place to hang out. Um, there you go. Yeah, it's all right. We're kind of... There, is, <laughs> there are some things that are up to date. Right, let's have a look. Where are we? I'm getting confused now. So that compiles. Great. And then we're down here. We're compiling LOD. We'll compile this. And it's freaking out. What's wrong with this? Uh, too many elements. Yes, that is correct. Because we didn't wrap this around that. So if I recompile again, that doesn't complain. Let's say continue. Good. Now, let's go back to base. And we are going to ignore that one for a second. What we really want to examine now is our occlusion chain sampler. There we go. And we are going to do EXPT uh, 20 because again we want some definition here that we can actually see um, the values but now we're going to try and specify a MIP level as well and what happens Ooh, look how we're getting closer and closer that seems wrong oh but now we don't actually know is that because we're doing the the size thing let's see let's see we'll get repeating pattern if Zulu is correct. We just need to do it but based on the base size. Da, da, da. I should really just read text or fetch. It will tell me exactly what the fucking behavior is. But it's okay. Live and learn. Um, okay, let's change this size momentarily. It should just be 512 by 512. Yeah, that looks... Uh... That looks interesting, actually. Because I'm switching through the, the different levels. But I'm not seeing any change in the resolution. They all look like I'm sampling the base level, which is rather annoying. Um, why would that be? I don't know. It's 2247 though, so we're running out of time. So it looks like we're not going to quite finish the occlusion. Um, so what should we do actually? Should we try and finish that compute shader? And understand that this is a problem we still need to solve. A, a, probably a good idea to finish writing that compute shader, isn't it? Just so we're done writing it. Um, there is still some stuff that's kind of tricky, though, that we haven't got to. Eeh. Right. Um, so I suppose one thing we can check quickly is just print hi. Who? Fine. Who? I am not going to complain. Good. There we go. This is defined but never used, correct. So the size we're passing in is always 512 by 512. Oh look, oh that's why, I bet you've already told me in the chat as well, the LOD wasn't being passed in. Now we're talking, right, now, now we're getting the actual result we expect. Fucking ace, okay, and that means the original size thing was correct. Yes, look, here we go, right, now, in other words, Two, four, five, seven, ugh, look at that, nine, <laughs> ten maybe. Ta-da, in texture index out of range. Aww. But yeah, nine, that makes sense. Continue. Um, and back to zero again. Right, okay, so that bit kind of works. It's good enough for testing. One thing it did tell us is those layers are populated, which is nice. Um, that's great. Um, okay, so that feels good. We're populating that thing and we've got the data we need. So now let's go back to compute foo and we'll spend the last few minutes just dealing with this. Where do we get up to? We've got our MIPS. 
Um, yeah, and I'm actually with you, uh, Zulu. I think we should try and get rid of the, the, all those um, ancillary textures on the downsampling and just use a subset of a single one. I think that's a good idea. Because, I mean, like, it's all ordered anyway, so we're not going to get any additional parallelism out of doing that. Um, where did we get to? Where did we get to? It's exciting now. This is good. Okay, we got past here. Yes, calculate high Z mipmap. And then that's when I remembered what was going to happen and freaked out. Okay, so Texel footprint. Interesting, okay. And one thing I'll do as homework, I'm going to go and read this a few times and try and get some information out of it. So we can go down and go through this function and really understand what it's doing, why we've got these two different levels and all that kind of stuff. So let's just keep going. Uh, level lower is max of MIP minus one, zero. Cool, right. And then we've got scale is EXPT, EXP2. Do we have a definition for that? We probably do. Let's have a look. Um, and it's from negative of level lower. Um, a, oh, well, that's a good variable name, is floor of, um, and we're going to swizzle out box UVs. We just need X and Y um, and scale. That's fine. And B, not A, B, but B on its own um, is going to be ZW. This is the stuff we packed into that vector earlier. Um, it's going to be done by scale. Cool. Then we've got dims, which is minus B from A. That gets us our dimensions. Cool. Let's keep going. Da, 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 da. We're going to get all this written out. And I know we could shove it through our little thing that we've got for translating this, but it's good to do it by hand. There's lots of things we've realized in the process with this. Um, that it helped. Okay, so use the lower levels if we only touch less than two texels in both directions. That's interesting. Okay, so MIP is going to be if um, some stuff, then um, MIP or MIP. Uh, this is going to be level lower. There we go. Um, and it's if. And less than equal x of dims dims two. Yep. Okay, so all this is the general thing that it's doing is work out which MIP level we should be pulling from, work out the values that we need to pull, which is this bit here. Um, and we can get all this together and then check it with our depth, um, with our minimum depth. And um, yeah, then we then we get to, can get a good guess of whether we're occluded or not. A good approximation. It'll always be conservative and that's what you want because otherwise if it's, um, if it's the other way around, um, it's going to be hiding sometimes when it shouldn't. 20, how many minutes have we got left? 53, seven minutes. Da, 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 da. Time to look at chat. Um, seal instead of floor. Metia. <gasps> Thank you. That would have fucked me up. You're a scholar and a gentleman. Okay, cannot establish the type of depth variable. Yeah, okay. That's correct because I haven't done it yet. I'm sorry. I got excited and compiled things. Such is the way. Um, vector. Whew. Okay, sample level. Ah, look. Sample level. My bet this is text will fetch. Look, see. Texture. Sorry, texture, function, the sampler, the positions, MIP level. This is text will fetch. 100%. Um, 
What are we sampling from? Input RT. It's the one we've been using. Right, let's just call let's just call it input RT two. Um, we'll come back to that. And we go swizzle box UVs. Why am I rushing? We're not going to get anything running today. Shut up, Chris. Just do it. Okay, right. Mip. Um, two, three, four, and it's ZY, and it's XW, and it's ZW, and that's that. That's a vector. Um, let's find the max depth. Cool. Max depth is going to be max of max of. Um, interesting that they do it like that. We could just make that into a right. Let's just do that. Um, or are we going to need? No, I don't think. Let's just do this. Okay, x of depth and y of depth, and outside of that max. I'm going to use Z of depth, and we're going to need another max, so there must be three maxes in there. Yes. Um, no. Z, Chris. Z. W of depth. Cool. So that's that. And then we get down here to when active culling. Activate culling. Why would you have a. We're not going to have a flag for that. Yeah, I suppose. Now we can recompile stuff on the fly. Okay, so we only need to do when min z, that's our minimum z, that conservative position that we're interested in, is less than or equal to max depth, then it might be visible and we need to render it. That's when we go right out to, um, to the uh, per inst buffers. Yay. Cool. And we'll actually stop the uh, one zero thing in there. Okay, right. Let's compile this, get see the errors. Input RT is undefined. That is actually correct. Um, we were expecting that. And that is going to be a uh, texture 2D. Okay, when defining the function, we found some args with types that we didn't. Oh, is it sampler two D? I actually forget now. It's terrible, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, again, this is a vec two, and it needs to be an i vec two. Oi. Um, we need to see the correct way of doing that. But we are nearly there, and I think we're out of time. Yeah, it's two minutes left. Let's call that a day. That's actually really close. Um, so I'm feeling pretty happy about that. That is the majority of it. And even though I haven't got, we haven't gone into the details of what exactly this is doing, a lot of this code is very familiar, especially with these, with these comments, yeah. We're taking all these bounding boxes. So we're gonna have a bounding box for every single one of these spheres. We're gonna use, uh, we're gonna dispatch this compute shader, um, which, and we're gonna give it however many instances we're rendering, which is a thousand in this case. And then we're gonna sample into this information here. And this is storing the bounding box and the world bounds for all of these spheres. And with that information, we then transform them as we would for a normal, for a normal render view which is why we have to transform it into NDC space like this. This is the kind of stuff that would normally be done by the vertex stage and the um, transform stuff that's right after it. And I can't remember the name of the fucking stage, uh, but it gets it into normalized device coordinate space. We do essentially the clipping by doing, um, uh, by doing our ceilings and floors and clamps and things like this. Um, we, um, yeah, mins and maxes and all this kind of stuff. We, Calculate, um, yeah, some two different mipmap levels. And this is the thing we need to look into. This is the detail I don't know about yet, is why we're taking two mipmap levels and then picking one of them. Um, but it will make sense in time. 
Um, it's it's down to this. I mean, you need to know the reasoning for this. Um, and then it's, uh, yeah, then we just, out of that level, we pick the uh, depth values there, compare them to our, the, our most conservative value, so our, most ne our nearest the camera depth. And if we are occluded, we'll know, and we don't get written into the output. And this stuff we're about to write out here, that's going to be our per instance data for the next call we do, which is going to actually render out the number we need. Um, we're going to do that with indirect and all this kind of stuff. So there's a few things to write there. You'll see that some of the outputs they're writing. I'm just going to talk about this for a second because it's super exciting to me. Um, we're appending some stuff. This is going to be the per instance data. And we're interlocking add onto the instance counts. So this is like how many instances of the thing are we rendering. Um, and you can see the instance data out is an append structured buffer, which is essentially an SSBO with a counter that goes up atomically, right? And then instance counts is a read write buffer, which is an SSBO again, um, but they're using an atomic increment on that as well. So that's, this, is, this is all it is. It's all there. It's really cool. So I'm very excited about that. I think we're pretty much on top of this. Um, there's a few things that I need to um, get an understanding on. And actually, really, it's to do with uh, yeah converting those um, vectors down to ints and what does float truncation and what does rounding and all that kind of shit. Oh, that was fun. Okay, cool. So let's see what the chat was saying for the last couple of minutes. Nice, nice, nice. Let's have a look. Um, oh, Lisp merch. God damn. Yeah, I, I was actually going to do some merch for this as well at some point. I need to get someone who's going to draw some nice logos. I do know people can do that, though. Um, Zulu saying, but I think you need three because you need one to represent the final MIP, your MIP, ulti MIP final output text. Yes, we definitely need that. Your input base texture. Yeah, you're probably right, actually. Yeah. Yeah, that was the, that is the issue we ran into. I think you're right. I think that's three then. Cool. I got excited and compiled things. Yes, that's me. Um, do 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 two fifty four. Ah. Um. Oh, I see. That's what you wanted on the list match. That'd be great. I got excited and compiled things. Yeah. Um. Ugh, stickers on laptops. I don't mind other people doing it, but it's never on mine. Okay. Um. Trash talk saying the stream was fun, not as boring as I thought. Hooray! That's cool. I do worry. <laughs> Despite what everyone tells me. Right. Now, this was good fun. Um, I enjoyed this. I'm really glad we got to do this at the normal time. We'll keep doing that. Um, that's great. Yeah. See you, folks. Next Wednesday. I just have to find the button on here that makes it all stop. And um, there it is. <laughs>